Hello my warriors, how is it going? Welcome to a little update on the new skill system. So PGI did some stuff and um, hmm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that because they listened to the community. They listened to all of our feedback and they implemented a new stuff. I won't say that the new skill system is perfect already, but we made some big progress into the right direction. And what I want to do today is I want to give you a quick overview of the changes. Then I'm going to do some example builds and later on we will talk about the, the feel of it. So I just got to wrap it up and uh, talk about my, my feeling and my thoughts about it. So let's, let's go ahead and go over to the Mac lab. There is the skills tab. And what, what is just jumping into your eye, as you can see, is that big weapons skill tree here. So it was three skill trees before, and now they changed it a bit for a bigger, I think, diversity of, of builds. But uh, we'll talk about it in a second. We've got the armor and structure, or the armor structure skill tree. We've got the agility skill tree, which uh, was two skill trees before, and now they put it together into one big one uh, with a left and right side. But again, we talk about it later. We've got the jump capabilities, not that interesting. Mech operations with all the um, the cooling cooling skills in here. Uh, you got quick ignition, cool run, and heat containment. Where is it? There. Uh, we've got the sensor system, very interesting as well. And another new skill tree, which is miscellaneous. Uh, it's all about consumables, actually. But let's start with the first one. So as you can see, we have a lot of neutral nodes like velocity, range, range, cooldown, heat generation. Those apply to all of your weapons that you are having in the mech. So no matter if they are ballistic, no matter if they are energy or missile weapons, all of those neutral nodes will apply to them. However, we have some specialized nodes in there, which are laser duration 1 to 10. We've got 10 of those. We've got some missile skills like high explosive, which increases the critical hit chance. We've got Missile Rack, which is very nice because now we get more missiles per ton of ammo that you put into the mech with the Missile Rack skill here. We've got Missile Spread, which is kind of a no-brainer. You just reduce the spread of that. We've got High Explosive, which we already had talked about. And uh, that's basically it. <laughs> so Missile Spread, Missile Rack and High Explosive. That's the, the thing for the missiles. For the ballistic weapons, we've got a ghost charge, which will result in an extended charge time. So you have a bit more time to aim when your ghost rifle is charging. It's up to one second with those four skill nodes uh, unlocked here. Uh, we've got magazine capacity that was in the game or in the last patch uh, or test patch thing as well. It increases the amount of ammunition you get out of a ton of ammo. Uh, we've got two of them here, one over here, one over here. Um, we've got... Uh, LBX spread, which reduces the spread of LBX weapons. Uh, we've got five of them up to here. And we've got a UAC jam chance, and that is five of them as well over here. Also, I just saw that we've got another ghost charge here. So you can bump it up 1.25 seconds, so it seems. Now, the problem here is that we start uh, if we start here, we, uh, as usual, unlock our skill node. Then it costs a bit of Siebels and XP. And what's really cool is that they reduce the Siebel and the XP cost. It's only only 60,800 XP. Uh, general XP or Mac XP, as you can see. You can unlock it with either one. And then we can go down a path. But if we would boat a weapon, let's say we only have auto cannons in this one, standard auto cannons, uh, we could go down velocity. That absolutely makes sense. We could go for more velocity, maybe range. I don't know. This is here like a dead node, but. Anyway, uh, more velocity, more cooldown, cooldown, velocity, uh, more heat generation, range, heat generation, velocity. It's, it's good. So more heat gen. And at this point, we could go only for range. And then we are stuck in the in the missile tree here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, more heat gen, range. And then we are kind of stuck here because, okay, magazine capacity makes kind of sense. All right, let's go for it. Range. Cooldown, cooldown, LBX spread. No, no, I, I have standard auto cannons, so I, I really don't want that. I don't have ultra ACs, okay? This is all speci specialized here. So we take that magazine capacity, more range, more cooldown, and then we are again on those specialized ones. And at this point, we're just stopping. Uh, probably could go for the velocity thing here. But yeah, when we want to unlock those here, those heat generation, cooldown, more heat generation, uh, we needed to go for a dead node for one of those missile skill nodes here or the laser duration node. So if you wanted to go for like that heat generation node for our auto cannons, 
we needed to invest two nodes for laser weapons, which we don't have. And that is very interesting because boating is not as efficient anymore if it comes to skills or when it comes to skills. So imagine that we needed to probably stop right here because this is this seems reasonable, right? When I only have auto cannons in my mech, this looks like a good idea because I don't want any of those dead missile and energy nodes. So I, I have to stop here and now I got a lot of nodes that I can invest into other stuff. Um, if I had a mixed loadout now, let's say some auto cannon tens and medium lasers, then I could go over here, add the laser duration skills and go for more heat generation and, uh, and cooldown skills. So we could go down here, more laser duration, and I, th I think you can see where this is going, right? So all the neutral nodes, all of those blue ones, they will apply to both of my weapons, while the colored ones, the uh, the purple and the yellow, they will apply to this uh, speci uh, specific weapons. And that is interesting. So this gives me a big bump when I'm going for a secondary weapon system. And I think that is a step into the right direction. I think it's not perfect yet, but it feels good. It, it really feels good. So yeah, there's, there's that. A uh, very quick thing that I want to show you, uh, if I'm just going ahead and I remove those here. Let's imagine we have a ballistic weapon loadout and we want to save that, apply the changes, uh, invest 1 million Siebels and a bunch of XP here. Okay, I'm very fine with that. And at some point I'm thinking that I want, I want to do something else. Let's do, let's remove all the ballistic weapons in my mech. I want to do a laser build with that one. What I now do is I respect this skill tree and press that OK button, apply the changes. Oh my god, no cost at all. They removed the respect cost completely and I am so happy about that. I couldn't stress this enough. It is just so good that PGI listened to that. So respecting should be free and it is now. And that is really cool. Also, as you can see, this skill now has now a dashed line around it. And what that means is that I unlocked this skill tree before and some point at some point in my Mac career on this Mac. And when I want to unlock it again, I only need to invest general XP or Mac XP. It has no Siebel cost anymore. So this one here is new. So I needed, if I wanted to unlock it for the first time, I need to invest Siebels and more XP. But if I want to unlock the velocity here, I already unlocked it before. I only need to invest general XP and this one is reduced uh, uh, to 50%. Yeah, I only need to invest half the GXP that I that I invested before, or XP in general, I'm only talking about GXP here. And that is so cool, that is such a great addition. So uh, guys like me who are constantly switching around their loadouts, they will have it much easier to build new builds and yeah, and specialize on them with the skills on that. That is, that is a really, really nice addition. And I'm fairly happy about the skill tree as it is right now. Again, it's not perfect, but I think they could implement it just right now as it is. So let's go over to the other skill trees. I just want to show you it very quickly. Uh, they removed some nodes, they rearranged some nodes, but they are basically the same. So the armor structure thing is, is kind of mandatory probably for all the heavies, maybe some mediums as well. And uh, probably a lot of assault max because it just gives you the tasty ones, the armor hardening, the skill density, uh, more armor hardening. And that is really cool. So problem is the tasty ones are down below. So you need to invest a lot of GXP here. Uh, AMS Overlord is kind of awkward. I don't know if you, if anyone ever wants to get that node, but we can work around it. So we are going to take shock absorbance. Fall damage is not that interesting as well, but it's better than AMS Overload. And then we can go for skill density and the armor hardening down below here. Enforced casing is also interesting. It reduces the critical hit chance. I think it's not mandatory to get, but uh, if you want that armor hardening here, I should get it because the other option would be a AMS Overload again. So therefore, Let's go down below here, take all those notes. It's again kind of mandatory to get that. And um, maybe you could even skip that one. I don't know. So this fall damage here, you need to invest in that one, in that fall damage node to get the scale, uh, skeletal density four. It kind of feels like a double investment because again, that fall damage reduction is not that interesting. So you basically have to invest two nodes for that. It's the only thing that I don't like about this one. But apart from that, it's okay. It's really cool. So let's take that. 
And we are going over to Agility. Now Agility used to be two skill trees before, one for the upper body, one for the lower body, and it is kind of, it's still kind of that. So when you take a look at the notes here, the left side of the tree is all about torso speed. Torso speed, torso pitch, torso yaw, torso yaw, torso speed. It's all about torso. You got some heartbreak and anchor turns down below, but it's upper body and this one here is the lower body. So you've got kinetic burst, kinetic burst, heartbreak, anchor turn. You can see where this is going. So probably a lot of heavies and above, or heavies and assault max, would probably go for the left side because they want a nice defensive skill system with a big twist speed. So they are in the fights and they want to stay there and then they want to twist their torso, shoot their weapons, their torso mounted weapons at the enemy and at the same time want to twist their torso away when they are getting return fire. So they are not that interested in that anchor turn and kinetic burst that much. This is for lighter max. This is for lights and mediums. And uh, I will show you an example later where this is coming in. Uh, apart from that, if you want to get speed tweak, if you want to get all of the speed tweaks, you need to invest in both sides of the of the tree because there the speed tweak begins there and then are there are two down here. But if you're just going down on one side, you can still unlock three of those nodes, which is kind of okay. The only thing that I don't like about that is that you need to go over an arm pitch, which is again kind of a dead node. Who wants arm pitch? Seriously, this is just... You have that on both sides and... Ugh, I don't know. It's just not, not good. However, you have the ability cr to cross down here. So if you are going uh, down below here, you can see... Come on. That I can just switch the branch here. Which is nice. So if I wanted to go for Heartbreak and Anchor Turn uh, with a little investment, uh, then I could fill out this side here and, and go for that as well. So we have some options here, which is really nice. Uh, jump capabilities, kind of meh, who even wants that? I don't know. What we have though is the heat shielding. Uh, it just um, reduces the amount of general heat while jump, it, jump jetting. It's a lot of nodes. Uh, you've got five of them here. You can reduce that by 30%. But I don't know if anybody would invest jump jet skills. I think the other ones are better in general. Um, so there's no no real reason. Or I'm just I'm just missing something here and they are totally OP, but <laughs> uh, my tests so far were like, okay, I got better jump jets now, but what am I supposed to do with them? They were shitty before and now they are less shitty. So <laughs> alright. We've got Mac Operations. It's again kind of the same as before. They switched around some nodes. It feels okay now. Uh, we still have to go through some nodes that I really don't like, but that's fine. So quick ignition. All right, so let's go over to speed retention. Uh, no, I, I don't think that it's that important. Again, maybe I don't see the value of it, but speed retention, if you are lagged, you are lagged and then you are probably dead anyway. Uh, but improved gyros is important, or interesting at least. So we re reduced the screen shake by 17.5%, which is, with only one node, very, very much. So let's go down this path, and then we are just going over and uh, go for the heat containment, hill climb, improved gyros, cool run, heat containment, quick ignition. I think you can see where this is going. More quick ignition. Hill climb is okay. I don't want that. Really, speed retention is, again... Mm. And the, the tasty heat containment is behind that dead node here. I wouldn't say it is dead, but it is not that significant. So maybe a lot of people are just skipping this here to get the tastier ones down below. And more heat containment. So we could go for like this, probably. Uh, I think that, that looks like a reasonable build here. Uh, the sensor systems, again, kind of the same, but we've got the rated deprivation nodes here. So this is interesting. So they are not, not uh, dug down below or hidden down below here. You don't need to dig uh, that deep into the skill tree for rated deprivation. Um, but the problem is if you want 100%, you need to go down both paths here. So we'll probably go for target info gathering, sensor range, more target info like that. And down here. The, the good thing is that you can now unlock a sensor, a, a seismic sensor one, uh, two actually. Uh, that's really cool. So with that one unlocked, you can go for that as well. And if you wanted to get to a radar deprivation of 100%, then you need to invest this here. Sensor range, target retention. It's like, uh, I really don't want those. Sensor range and target retention is not that mandatory in a lot of builds. But radar deprivation kind of is. And we got target decay down below here. It's like, 
Uh, a big investment, but again, that 60% on the left side, that feels reasonable. That feels really reasonable. And then we've got a very interesting node system here. So we've got that miscellaneous uh, skill tree, which is all about consumables. What we can have now is another consumable slot. So when I go over here, go to the consumables tab, you can see we've got two empty slots and four slots that we can unlock. And those two means that we can take two of those, uh, like an advanced UAV and a cool shot 18. And 18 is interesting. So no cool shot 6 anymore, no cool shot 9 by 9. It is straight up 18. And what's really cool about this is it is uh, 18 for both MC and C builds. They upped the C build cost a bit, which is okay. But there is no difference between the MC um, consumable and the Siebel consumable anymore. And I really like that. So you basically have the choice that you can either spend real money or in-game money on it. And there is no difference in the outcome. And I really like that they buffed it up to a cool shot 18. And what is extremely interesting about it is the following. Now you can unlock more consumables. So when I unlock the first consumable, I my first thought was, oh yeah, I can add another cool shot now, but uh, I can't. Mm. It's kind of shitty, but I can add the third consumable of the of the category. So we got the three categories. Now I can apply one of each. And when I'm getting down here, uh, I can enhance my cool shots. I can get capture assist. I can enhance the cool shot even more. More capture assist, or I don't even need that. And then I can get the coolant reserves, which allows me to get another cool shot in the mech. And now what I can do now is I can have two cool shots, 18, for a cost of 120 C bills. It's a lot of investment in terms of C bills, but at some point when you are fine with your mech collection, you are going for efficiency and then you have those two. You have two cool shot 18 and that makes a big difference. So before you could only go for a cool shot 9x9 nine nine and a cool shot 6, uh, which made 24 combined, and now we can have a coolant of 36, which is great. And this again applies to all of those uh, consumables. You can go for a UAV duration range, and there you got your extra UAV that allows you to ap apply two UAVs when you want it. That's really nice for scouting max, and I can see that absolutely working for, for lighter max that are just going for consumables. It will cost you a lot, but at the same time, popping up a UAV is always a good thing because you get a lot of XP for that, and you get a lot of C builds when there is UAV lock damage. So you most of the time get your UAV back as an investment. And that is basically the system at the moment. Um, I really like it so far. It feels good. It really feels good. I think they can just implement it as it is right now and then tweak it later on in upcoming patches. Because um, again, it, it favors mixed builds in that skill tree here. So if you want to unlock all those neutral nodes, it's, uh, you, you should, you really should do like an energy and a ballistic. Uh, actually, I, I did not check check that. I did not check that if you can um, can you get through here if you are going for laser and missiles. Not that much. We can go down here. Let's see. We are quickly checking that live here. So velocity, heat gen, range, heat gen. No, I don't want velocity actually. But we can get a bit of range and heat gen out of that when we are going for that velocity. Actually, we can take velocity because we have the missiles. What am I telling you here? So, yeah, we are missing out on a bit of range and cooldown. But that's okay. That's absolutely okay. So, you could go this path here when you're having an energy and missile loadout like that here. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, that was the, the overview of the skill system. What's uh, also really interesting here, uh, let me quickly do that before we uh, sh before I show you some, some of the example builds, uh, is that there was... There was a thing. Uh, yeah, I want to do that. Um, that was changed with the acceleration and deceleration. So before, when we had two mags with the same tonnage and the same engine rating, they had basically the same acceleration and deceleration, but now they detached it from the engine rating. So when we take a look at this quick draw here, it has an acceleration of 48.1 kph and an engine rating of an XL250. And when we, I don't know, let's take this Rifleman 3N for example, it has a bigger engine, but 
a slower acceleration. So this one is now tied to the Mac chassis uh, and not on the engine anymore. So before it was on the engine and when there were quirks applied, uh, like on the quick draw, they, it had some acceleration and deceleration quirk. It was tied to the engine rating. So let's say we had a 40% acceleration quirk and the bigger the engine gets, the bigger you the value gets that you got out of your quirk there. And now it is fixed and tied to that Mac. So when you unlock kinetic burst and uh, heartbreak, it will apply to those values and not to the engine rating anymore. And that is, that is really cool. I really like that. So now the Mac uh, is more specialized in its role. So all the mobility, the PGI can, can patch that uh, and it's not a quirk anymore and it's not relative anymore. It is a fixed value and that is really cool. Uh, but it's just a minor change. But that was a quite, uh, the quick overview and now we are getting into the examples. All right, we are starting with the Warhammer here. We are having a mixed loadout of LB10 and PPCs. And as you can see, it got some structure quirks. It got some energy heat generation quirks, PPC generation and inner sphere PPC velocity quirks. So those are the baseline quirks that we got on this chassis. And we are going to apply some skills to make this one viable. So uh, let's go with the LB10 first. So I, I want to unlock a lot of those LB10 spread quirks and I'm just going for the neutrals first. I want velocity, velocity is good. Range, not so much, I can skip that probably. And Gauss, the Gauss path is uh, not interesting for me as well. Magazine capacity, however it is, uh, I need more velocity. That is also good for my PPC here. Heat generation is always good, more velocity, more heat generation. Again, those are applying to the PPC and that is good. Uh, I am taking this range quirk here as well. And then I'm going down to cooldown, more range. And there we are at the LBX spread quirk. And we are just going down this path. Can unlock those cooldown and range quirks as well. More cooldown. And maybe that magazine capacity here, the cooldown and the LBX spread. So this is what it's like when you are having that loadout. PPC, LB10. I won't go down this here because I told you before, it's only applying to lasers and I don't want to invest a lot of stuff into that. However, I really want the cooldown, but I can't get it. I, I don't think that it is worth it. So, also I'm skipping this range here. Don't need it so much. Uh, when we are going over to the armor structure, I already told you before that I probably want all of them because this is a heavy mech. It benefits a lot from from armor and structure bonus and I really want to get almost all of them also I don't want this so that I get down here armor hardening skeletal density oh yeah give me that so this looks like a very nice tanky mech now then we're going over to agility and uh, since this is a heavy mech it is very much static uh, I want to do that torso branch here so I don't need that that kinetic burst, heartbreak and the anchor turn so much because this one will be probably a, a mid-range sniper and later on when the brawl begins I need a decent amount of torso twisting and therefore I'm just going this path here and I'm skipping, I'm, I'm trying to skip all the all the notes that I really don't need so I don't need arm pitch that's bad got some anchor turn here problem is that if you want to get speed tweak we need to get that arm pitch here uh, it's kind of a shame because i only have torso mounted weapons it, it's it's a i don't know it's kind of a, a node gate here I, I need to get through that to get to the to the tasty ones but whatever i think that is yeah again for my build here a dead node uh, do i have any other arm no no oh yeah i can no i can't yeah i should go for heartbreak then so I'm miss missing out on that torso speed, but it's fine because uh, I'd rather invest uh, not two slots into that here. I'd rather get the benefits out of the heartbreak. So jump capabilities. I don't have jump jets. It's fine. Mech operations. Now it gets it's getting interesting because uh, I want a decent cooling, and we can get another good uh, cooling out of that here with the. Uh, with the cool run nodes. So let's go over to speed retention. No, not speed retention. I, I want the gyros because the screen shake, uh, the incoming screen shake reduction is, is really great. Speed retention, not so much. When you are lagged, you're basically dead. So there's, I don't know, not really 
not really necessity to necessity to get this one here. Uh, anyway, so heat containment, uh, hill climb. I don't want hill climb, but I need to get that to get through here. Uh, improved drivers, yeah, give me that, that's fine. I want cool run, I want heat containment. Quick ignition, not so much, but I think we have to take it to get the third cool run here. Speed retention, again, that is a, a dead node, more or less. So I really don't want to skill that. I want that heat containment, but that speed retention is kind of pointless for me. So I'm skipping it. And instead I'm going for quick ignition, hill climb, improved gyros, quick ignition, cool run, cool run. And we could also go for that. So I think I'll take those two as well. And we're fine. So as you can see, I only invested 83 points so far because I'm skipping out on a lot of nodes that are not quite necessary for my build. Uh, I can't get, I, I really can't get in here, which is okay. I don't want this. Uh, I missed a lot of slots in here. It's like uh, four or five, six. And now I still have uh, eight slots to go for other shenanigans. I don't want that miscellaneous stuff. I think that's better for lights and mediums, but we can still invest eight slots in here. And we are going for target info gathering and then probably sensor range. Sensor range, more target info gathering. We can get radar derp. We can get sensor range. And we can get another radar derp. And we are fine. And when you look at that, that skill notes here, it seems a bit all over the place. It is not that specialized anymore as before, where you would go for for just uh, three mandatory skill trees in every mech. It is it is kind of a bit more balanced now because I invested my my skill notes in a lot of different trees here and in a lot of lot of different paths. And when I apply the changes, it cost me five million, five and a half million, seventy two thousand eight hundred XP. But it seems reasonable. Before I would have invested six million into uh, into my modules when I wanted to upgrade them and I, when I wanted to uh, let them stay in the Mac. But I think that is okay. That is really okay. Yeah, that was the first example. We are going over to the next one. I want to show you another example how you would build a medium mech that is energy boating. So let's go over there. Okay, here we have got our Cicada 2A. It is a very classic champion build with six medium lasers. The quirks on that are energy heat and energy range. We've got some basic structure quirks and we are going to skill this one right now. Also, my client is getting horribly slow. I don't know what's going on here. So we're doing the same shenanigans, but on the other side. And I think you can already see where this is going. We're just going over to the, the range. And then we're just unlocking that laser stuff here. So this is a very specialized build. I want all the cooldown, all the heat generation quirks, all the laser duration quirks that I can get. I don't want missiles because I don't have that. And we are going to cooldown, heat generation, the range quirk as well, or the range skill, all that laser stuff and we are basically done all right that is 23 i really want again to get those heat generation quicks over here but i needed to go for velocity then and that is kind kind of behind that that big node wall here i can't get through there without a big investment so let's not do that i want structure hmm. maybe maybe not so much i don't know i will skip that for the time being what i really want is that agility stuff here so we've got kinetic burst we've got torso pitch heartbreak more kinetic burst. Uh, problem is, I need to get arm pitch. I don't have arm weapons here, again. Ugh. So let's not take that. More heartbreaks, kinetic burst, torso, heartbreak, anchor turn. Uh, the torso speed is actually pretty decent, so I have only torso mounted weapons, why not take this? Kinetic burst, anchor turn, arm pitch. And again, this one here behind the wall, behind the node wall. Let's get those speed tweaks and we're fine. So what we could do now is we could go through here. We could go for torso yaw, that, that helps. And then go for even more kinetic burst, heartbreaks. And I don't want torso, or maybe I want torso pitch. That's very interesting for that build here. 
and a bit of anchor turn. And I think at this point I would even invest that into the into the speed tweaks that I can unlock here. So probably something like that. Yeah, that looks decent. So I think this would be my cicada mobility or agility skill tree here. Don't have jump jets, that's fine. I definitely need the the heat management here. Uh, so therefore I'm just going again for the gyros. Heat containment, quick ignition, heat containment, cool run. I don't need hill climb so much. So let's take that cool run, quick ignition, heat containment. Now I need to get the hill climb. Gyros. Something like that. And I need to get hill climb as well to get that here. All right. And now we are going over to the sensors. So what I would do now is I uh, would go for probably sensor range, more range, target info gathering maybe. Oh no, let's just not take that. We are going down this path. We definitely need the rate of deprivation because we are running around the map and uh, we don't want to get targeted by missiles so much. So we don't have an ECM, that's kind of pointless. And if you wanted to go for the rest of the radar deprivation, we needed to go down this path. But we got sensor range, it's kind of meh. We've got target retention, mm. we've got more sensor range, ugh. target decay, ugh. and then we are done here. So I don't think that those two are worth it. We got 30, uh, three, three of those nodes unlocked, it's 60% radar deprivation. And that is okay, that is really okay. And we still have 10 nodes left, so we could go for consumables now. We could go for UAV duration, range, extra UAV, more range, and maybe the cool shot. Yeah, I think we need the cool shots. All right, something like that. And then we still have one point left, which we could invest in Something else, I don't know, maybe capture assist or something in here. So again, it is, it feels okay now. I'm very satisfied with that. So I'm not missing out too many slots that I that I really wanted, except for those here. But I I can see where PGI is going with that. And, and I feel that reasonable. So if you want to get the most benefit out of those neutral nodes here, you need to do a mixed loadout. And I highly, highly like that. So that is... That is really cool. So I, I really want a more mixed up Mac Warrior Online. I don't like the big Alpha Strike builds. I don't like the specialized build. For me, it's a fun game to play when the enemy gets slowly torn apart bit by bit by a lot of different weapon types. And it, I think it makes the game more dynamic. So that is our Cicada build. Um, let's take this range thing here, apply the changes. Cost me again a lot of money and in uh, invested XP here. But I wanted to show you another thing that that is very interesting. So I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, but let's go back to our Warhammer when the game still, uh, when the game finished loading here. Yeah? What the hell, PGI? Come on. Could you please invest in a bigger test server? <laughs> so what's very interesting here is we got our armor skills unlocked. Um, if you can remember. And that means, uh, where is it? Armor bonus 16%. And what's interesting is the numbers around it. So as you can see here, I have now a maximum number of armor on this center torso of 101. When I reduce that, it suddenly goes to 100. Because again, those numbers are rounded. And if you really want to specialize, if you really want to opt optimize your build, you should adjust your armor to, to a spot where you get the most out of it. So of course, if I invest all of my slots here, I'm at 101. It's kind of awkward here. Uh, but there are some, some other things that you should consider. So when I'm going down here to a certain level, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 12. What the hell? We skip 13. So you pro probably want to add... Oh, great job, PGI. 
Okay, the numbers are, are jumping a bit. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you want to optimize your build by getting those little points out uh, as much as possible. But yeah, it's, I think it's kind of buggish at the moment, so they, they should fix that. So that was my very quick wrap up of the new skill tree, the second iteration that we got out now. And uh, yeah, again, to wrap it up, I think it is okay, actually. So I don't know, the, there was a lot of hate in the, in the first iteration and I can absolutely see that. So there was some some validity in the, in the arguments. PGI listened to all of that stuff and they implemented the second iteration and I am actually so happy because we are doing a big step into the right direction. Not only because that you don't need to invest that much of Siebel's and time and XP in it anymore, but also because it kind of feels, it's only feeling for me, I didn't test it so far. But it kind of feels like mixed loadout could be a better option right now. And I am so I would, I would be so happy about that because this is the Mac Warrior I want to play. I want to build a lot of different builds with that mixed loadout. I don't want that high efficient super alpha strike builds. They are fun sometimes, yes, but I want to rip my enemies apart bit by bit in long fights. I want to watch my heat scale. I want to disengage at some point. I want to engage again. I want to think about what I need to do, I want to take my time and I want longer games and I really hope that we get them out of that. So it's just a personal opinion, I don't know. What is your opinion on that? Do you like the skill tree so far? Is it good? Do you like what it is bringing? Is it overpriced? I have no idea. So leave a comment down below. I, I really want to get into a discussion with you here and I really want to see what your thoughts on the skill tree are so far. And that is the video for today. I hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support me, then go down below to the description. There is a link to my Patreon page. There you can support me with a bit of money if you want. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everybody. Goodbye.